Hi friends! I'm Olga Kölsch and welcome back to my studio. Today is very green because we are going to paint potted plants and among them this, <laughs> this little guy. And I hope you enjoy the process. I hope you will be inspired to paint all your home plants as well. So let's start. As a source of inspiration, I will use this Norwegian uh, magazine, which called Deco Decoration with Plants. I'm pretty sure in your countries you have something similar, something very inspiring for those who like home plants or, and for those who like to paint home plants. The first things, thing we need to do is prepare nice green color. If we take um, phthalo green right from the palette, it looks like um, something like kids painting, which is all right. But I suggest we mix something more sophisticated. That's why I add red color. It should be one of your cold reds, like Windsor red, not, um, not, not something on the pink side, but something rather cold. I get nice shade out of this and see how beautiful this might be. This is very beautiful green, dusty, grayish color. And so let's start. I will start with painting a pot because we are painting potted plants. And I would not make it too complicated. I will just use burnt sienna and just with the belly of the brush I paint the pot and with the tip of the brush I add some shades around. Also the pot will be rather simple but of course if you feel like you would like to decorate the pot it's always always nice, always fun. I remove a little bit of color from the middle to make it more shiny and more rounded. Add some volume. So, but that's, I think that's enough for painting, painting a pot. So I mixed already our green color mixing and with relatively big brush, it's number 12 today, I will start to paint greenery from the, from the bottom to the top. I'm just painting this um, very specific lawn Sanseviera leaves with sometimes in some countries called ma mother-in-law tongs. Don't know, don't know why. Um, and anyway, I think the name Tong is is quite descriptive, and that help you to to paint it. Uh, when you paint, try to differentiate your moves with the brush. Sometimes you could wiggle your brush to create some waves. And sometimes um, move uh, the direction, change the direction. If it, uh, you could also try to paint from top to the bottom, which is also bring some variety. Um, and try to make them all, all these leaves on different level, not too straight. I would like to paint some bolder um, leaves inside the plant to create the volume. And for example, I would like to set one dark leaf just here in between. Oh, it's a little bit too bright. I need to add a bit more of Red. It's uh, when you mix during your painting, always nice to have some paper around so you could immediately test, 
just the hues like this, for example. So let's back to our painting. Some leaves are in between. They are um, far from us and they are hidden in the shades of the front leaves. So that's why they are darker. You could overlap leaves with each other, play around, add some shades inside. Um, this one a little bit too dark. I'm planning to keep it inside. I, uh, I will let it a bit dry and be back here later. The, here could be one more leaf and I fill in this gap with this plot. No, oh, with this sleeve, I add one green guy here, and what I'm doing now, I would like to paint something on the front. Let's see how it will work. I uh, clean my brush with the paper towel and go again on this area to blot the color. While the, this part is drying, I would like to add some shades. The sun shines from, from the left, which means these leaves create some shades and just with um, with a almost straight line, I divide all the leaves one from each other. Add some green, add some dark shades, and the area um, bordering with the pot should be the darkest area in the whole picture because sun shines from the top, which means the top is lighter and this part is mainly in the shade. So we will definitely need to add more green color. Uh, another specific of this plant is this zigzag texture, which we randomly add to the leaves. Try not to be very symmetric, not, not to ornamental while doing this, um, because it all brings variety. Add some shades in between if you feel that it could look nicer. Um, but uh, if you put some texture already, try not to touch this area. Try um, to keep your brush, to keep your hand very free. That creates nice um, moves, very random, which look very organically at the end. Add some um, shades and contrast at the, the last stage, some textures some vines for the leaves, some improvisation is always nice. I'm looking through the camera, how does it look? I think it looks very nice. I just want to add a bit more contrast here and in principle we are done. Next one. Next one, I would like to paint Calathea. I will put Calathea in in the other plant, in the other pot, in the other pot. And bring it a little bit closer. I will make the pot slightly higher.
Uh, Calathea has round leaves with some mm, with some stripes on it. So first we are painting the lighter part of the leaves. Oh, just saw the drop. If the drop is wet, it's you could just remove it with a clean paper towel. So what we are painting now is the light part of Calathea leaves with the belly of the brush I just um, create leaves and very fine lines for now I connect it I plant it into the pot um, because we might um, Paint something overlapping, like this. But we need to think how it all connects, so it would not look very weird. Uh, for this, for Calathe, I took a little bit of uh, grayish green for the variety. And I'm just Right now I'm creating the mass of leaves. They look in different directions. And I always try to connect them, to put them, to plant them in the pot. It, uh, the leaves have a wavy texture, which is important to show up. I mean, it, it's nice when we show, show when they emphasize some details. So uh, that's the bottom part. Let's now add the texture and that, that's going to be interesting. I Add a little bit green to the mixture to, for the variety and for to make it more bold. I'm checking out. Mm, I think it could be a little bit more bold, so I add more and more color from the palette. Yes, that looks very convincing. So what we are painting now is the main line and just few lines with different, uh, with different um, thickness on the leaf. If you look at the plant, it looks like a zebra a little bit, um, sometimes two thick stripes, one, uh, two dark stripes, one white stripe. So you could Try to emulate a bit the texture, but not, um, you know, not be obs uh, obsessed too much obsessed with this. So one leaf is done. Um, I I'm choosing some some leaf which is almost dry. I do not want to um, uh, to get too much of the spider web feeling. I'm painting not exactly with the tip of the brush. I will try to turn my camera. So uh, it's like the tip of the brush but flat. And that allows me to create these nice curvy lines. And when I'm painting these lines, when I am line them on the leaf, I'm thinking about a leaf as a round shaped something and I I do not paint these stripes just straight. So the main uh, important part that you lie your striped level thinking in round terms, in rounded terms. Another leaf. 
and to make it easier you first map the middle line and then you set this um, dark area striped try to vary the pressure on your brush and add some details as darker uh, um, darker parts or some random single tiny stripes like this that's actually a very fun part my favorite i really like to add textures so let's do one more you could try to set the lines from the top to the middle if it's if that's more handy for you just um, so here and there look at the reference so the real plant you have and try to um, follow the natural curves and if you guys you have some uh, other plants which home plants which you really love uh, i really would like to know which are your favorite plants Maybe we could paint it together if you if you write in comments what's your favorite home plant uh, what's your favorite home plant to paint could be different and uh, I'm wondering if you are a fan of um, home plants or not really I <laughs> could you call yourself a green finger? I unfortunately I, I didn't uh, but I like plants at home sometimes I, I just choose those who really easy <laughs> to handle here are, we have two overlapping um, leaves and I'm painting from I start to paint the bottom one I keep in mind the shape of the upper one and just with with the stripes only with the stripes I could already um, mark the top one the top one leaf isn't it nice no need to paint outlines no need to paint um you know, with with a pen a pencil and just with few stripes you could really set um, really divide two overlapping leaves on this leaf we could see just the one side it's folded one to make uh, things interesting, try to vary, first to vary the greenery and vary the place where you set the lines. For example, here is the white part, so it's nice to put some stripe here. Or oh, it's uh, the thick one, so few tiny little ones would be nice. And the more you're getting close to um, like inside inside the pot inside the plant the darker it could be and let's um uh, for for the top one i will a little bit um dilute the mix to make to add some variety and also show that this leaf is on the top what's really helping me is to map out the middle line and um, keep some space here in between so our stripes would not blend very carefully 
some variety is nice wherever if you add and also um, some depth here if I add just a little bit of dark color it will start to flow and create a nice leaf the last thing what I would like to paint here with color tear you see that one leaf is actually um, goes on the top of the pot which is a nice call to add a shade so just with a darker brown I create some shade here and somehow this area is missing right let's paint something very very quickly and very dark and very dark in here still thinking in lines and shapes I actually think it could be a nice leaf which just coming out of the of this big bunch of leaves this big bunch of leaves the outline and with um, clean and damp brush I a little bit um, distribute the color mixing the color here and there because this uh, this leaf uh, is in the bottom area in the very shady area so it's okay not to paint too many details and it's okay to just to add some darker spots here and some shade on the pot adding some shade on the pot that's so our color fair is done and the next one will be will be um ficus um sometimes it's called fiddle leaf figs which i i have the real one at home again pot um maybe this time let's mix Add to burnt sienna a little bit of sepia to make it just a bit different. Just a bit different. It's always nice. Um, the uh, this figus, the fiddle leaf fig, it has one straight stem and big wavy leaves around. So I'm mapping out the the stem just with dotted line nobody will see it later i would like to start with lighter leaves they have very wavy shape so i'm wiggling my brush when i'm painting it and on the other side of the leaf as well another one if it helps you could Again, map out the middle line, just just a little bit, you see, just the dotted line. And with big wiggle moves, just proceed. I add more color to overlapping areas as there is a shade. But we will add some details, of course, and lines a bit later on another leaf mapping out the middle <coughs> the middle line paint the the leaf itself with a very light mixture very diluted mixture leave some uh, gaps wide gaps in between here, here is the stem, so this leaf hiding behind this stem. Another leaf. This leaf face to us and I suggest that this one will be folded. So we, in principle, we need to paint just the half of this. Uh, 
Uh, while it is still wet, I would like to add a few darker drops already to create this nice volume. Few more leaves. Um, uh, uh, this ficus uh, uh, it usually has big leaves on the top and smaller, smaller, smaller on the bottom. So let's do not forget about this. So we need to get it smaller with our leaves. Ti leaves should become tinier. Maybe that's that's enough to to show up there. Maybe one more. <laughs> it's very difficult to stop, but here I do not like this big gap in between. So I think one middle size leaf is just as nice here. And immediately I add some darker green shades to it to, um, to divide one leaf from another. Now I'm getting back to the stem. I'm taking burnt sienna. And with the tip of the brush, I connect, I create the stem. And I really like how the watercolor mixes now and create this, um, this texture. I find it very beautiful. Um, uh, this plot, it has very evident, very obvious middle lines and they are uh, brownish or lighter Mm, lighter green but usually a bit brownish so I'm just proceed with sepia <laughs> was a bit too harsh for the middle line so just with clean damp brush I blot out some color um, uh, if you do not like these mixes, um, don't uh, afraid now because we will add an extra layer. Uh, for example, these areas, they are dry already. And I would like um, very similar to what we did with Calathea here. But the difference is that in Calathea um, the thickness of lines were about equal and in this ficus we are painting bigger darker areas because we that's how we create these side wines because it's not a striped um, leaf not a striped plant, it just has obvious vines and uh, many people are asking how to paint vines on leaves, it's um, kind of a tricky thing sometimes, that's one of the ways, so you first paint the bottom mm, color, the color of the vines and then you set another layer and just carefully leave gaps which will tell us oh here is the vine um, the vine of the leaf always nice to add some darker color just here same thing on the other leaf so now you see why it was not you know not bad that um, this area maybe was not very beautiful on the first side because anyway we are going to close it with or with an extra layer so i'm really encouraging you if something goes wrong uh, in your watercolor painting during your watercolor painting just remember that you have also a lot of options to fix it 
and to make it even more beautiful than you expected. I want our figos look, uh, look loose and um, artistic, so I um, do not try to paint, how to say, very carefully. I leave gaps, I have a free hand, I wiggle my brush. Uh, the only thing I'm, I keep in mind that the lighter areas should be thin. They should be obviously thinner than the darker lines. And that will create the feeling, the nice feeling of realistic lines on, on the plant. The more you wiggle your brush, the more um, you create it, uh, the more you try to get rid of um, ornament um, style of painting, the more interesting, sophisticated it will be. Uh, you could map the lines with, with the tip of the brush and then with the belly of the brush you create the big green area. Now you see how beautiful these brown uh, blobs now looks like. Very organically, very um, watercolorish um, and very free. I do the same thing for, for the rest of the leaves. I um, dilute a little bit my greenery, mix again for the variety and to show that these tiny little leaves they are more fresh because these fickles, the older leaves are on the top, the more fresh leaves are on the bottom. That's all some, you know, some little tiny details, which is nice to keep in mind and to show up. I dry my brush with a paper towel. I blot out few areas in some of these mm, leaves for some volume. I would like to add a bit of hint of um, sepia to divide the pot and the plant and to make it maybe more fun I will add some decor on the pot just a very very diluted color we have something nice so we have three, three home plants. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed the process. I hope you are very inspired to paint your home plants. Please leave me some feedback and comments, which is your favorite home plant, which flower you would like to paint next and other things you would like to share. See you next time. Bye bye.